Web Hosting Control Panel, cPanel Video Tutorial, The Getting Started Wizard. So assuming that you've logged into your cPanel, what we're going to have a look at is the Getting Started Wizard. It's this icon here. So you click this icon here, the Getting Started Wizard will commence. If your hosting provider has only got English enabled, then it will automatically be set to English. So this is the welcome introduction to your control panel. This is where you get access to set up the basic essentials to get your account moving. So let's click next step. I'll let you read that introduction for yourself. It's just a basic synopsis here of how your site actually works. Your site's made up of a group of files and directories, uh, a, a lot like what you would have on your home computer. And the idea here is that you have specific areas of your website where you can upload your web files to that people will then have access to view them on the internet. Uh, there are portions of the website where they don't have access, uh, where uh, gener general public don't have access to your website and they would be the etc folder, the mail folder, and the um, temporary area here. So as you can see here, you have a public FTP area here for the public to be able to upload files to you if your business warrants that. Most businesses don't, and they're quite happy to put all of their web content into the public HTML directory, and everything that you put into there is publicly visible on the internet. And we'll cover that once we get to the stage of actually uploading your website to the server. That's just a brief synopsis there. Let's move on. This particular account that I'm in here, this is the account name, website R, and it's located at this particular location on the server. Mostly your web developer or designer will be requiring that information. If you're doing it yourself, then that now you know where to get it. This is an introduction on how to get files onto your web hosting account. You've got a couple of different choices in which to do this. You can access the inbuilt file manager system that's, that's, that's within your cPanel hosting account, and we'll cover that in a later tutorial when we talk specifically about the file manager. There is an excellent feature called WebDisk, and this allows you to load a particular plugin into your local PC, your office PC or your home PC or whatever you're accessing the, uh, the control panel with. And what it does is it basically allows you to drag and drop files just like you would in Windows or on the Mac. And it allows you to uh, quickly and easily put files from your computer up onto the website. There is a third method, which is using FTP, which is File Transfer Protocol. And that to do that, you need to have an FTP application. The one that I recommend and use is a, is a free open source FTP application. It's called FileZilla. But we will, we'll go through that in later tutorials. Next, this is where you can set up your web disk. And at this point in time, I'll leave that and we'll talk specifically about that on the web disk icon once we get to that tutorial but you can set it up from here so I'm going to skip that step here you can set up your very first email account once again I'm going to skip this step here I'm going to specifically talk about emails creating email accounts when we get down into the email management area but you can set up your own email address very easily using this particular wizard screen. You put your email address in, it might be Aaron, give it a password or click here and it will generate a password for you. That is a very, very secure option. And you would give yourself a mailbox quota, say 20 megabytes. We'll talk about that in more detail in the email setup section. So we're going to skip that step. Here is where you will set up your default email address. Each account comes with a default email address and it is usually the username that was created. 
at a particular domain name, in which point this is my domain name that I'm looking at here, and my default account username is website R. So website R at websiterenos.com would be the email address, and I want to make sure that that is set to fail, discard with error to the sender at SMTP time. And what this means is, is that should somebody send an email to any address that I haven't set up as an email account, it will be bounced back to them saying, sorry, there's no such person at this address. And you want to make sure that you do that so that you don't get overrun with spam where people are sending emails to accounts that don't exist. And this is just simply a much neater way of running your hosting account. Default emails, discarding. If you do need to have a catch-all or a default email address so that no matter if anyone sends it to John, Mary or Todd, even if those email addresses don't exist, you can forward them on to a particular address either at this domain or you could send it to someone at Gmail if you wanted to. I personally would like to push you towards setting it to a discard and then it's your job to set up. If you've got a John working for you, and you want John to have an email box, you create an email box for John. And if Mary's got an email box, you create an email box or a forwarder for Mary specifically assigning people email addresses and then discarding all others will help with your spam. Let's skip over that step. And here we have the ability to set up your webmail. Webmail is important. It depends how your business wants to operate, whether or not you want to have a fixed mail client like Thunderbird or Outlook or Outlook Express or entourage or whatever you might be using on your local PC or Mac, you have an option of setting up your mailboxes like that. Or you can also use the webmail feature that is built into your hosting account. And this is simply telling you, here is my link, drag this link up into my bookmarks, I could add it to my bookmarks, or I could put it anywhere I wanted to uh, on my desktop. And then this link would be my shortcut to my webmail. But we're going to cover that in more detail once we get into the webmail icon. Okay, next step. Here you can set the contact information. And all we need to do here is basically give yourself an email address. You can also provide a secondary email address. And you want to make sure that your send notifications are correct for disk quotas bandwidth usage limits, and email account quotas. Very important. Everything that's inside this wizard is also offered individually through icons through the control panel, which we will be discussing one at a time. So you can save that if you've changed it. I decided to skip. And that is the end of the wizard. It basically sets up the core fundamentals you don't have to use the wizard, you can set it up manually, and we'll be going through each of the icons in turn. That ends this tutorial on the Getting Started wizard. Be sure to check out all our other cPanel tutorials to learn how to use the great features of your web hosting account. And build your online business.